Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth general body meeting. Um, if this is your first time, welcome. We are Mize Latins in Science and Engineering. If this is your first, second, or second, third, and beyond, welcome back. Um, today is October 27, 2021. So let's get started. And if you haven't already, just please go ahead and scan this QR code. Um, it basically just sends you to a Google form. Uh, you can put you join our mailing list. Just let us know that you're here and participating and um, we'll email you any kind of like uh, next upcoming meetings or information or newsletters about um, workshops and things that we got going on. Okay, guys. Hey, what's up? So I'm Diego Oren Garcia. I am a new uh, Mayas member um, and I do middle school outreach. Um, I'm a third tr year transferring from LBCC, Shouts Out Vikings, and uh, my major is computer science. Um, my normal hobbies is when I have time, I like to play some video games. I got the PS5 right next to me, dude. And then um, I study Leak Code, trying to get an internship with um, you know, somebody, please hire me, basically. And I play a lot of volleyball. Um, so if you guys know anywhere, anybody playing volleyball, any groups, let me know. I'll be there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Jaime. I'm the underclassman recruiter. I'm a fifth year, kind of. Well, I was fourth year and it's like taking another semester, so I don't know what that is. Fourth and a half semester, I don't know. But anyways, I'm a chemical engineering major and my hobbies include graphic designing. I did these little squiggles, yes. And uh, um, I mostly spend money on too much coffee at coffee shops. So if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know, put them in the chat. Okay, so we do have an in-person social, which you're not gonna miss, hopefully. So we are picking up or collabing with um, SWE. So they do, they're gonna have this spectacular event along with other organizations. This will be held on Friday, October 29th at 5 p.m. at the VEC Courtyard Grassy Area. There, there's gonna be a costume contest, games, pumpkin painting, and etc. Masks are going to be required and costumes are highly recommended. There is a QR code like in the corner, but that's kind of too small. So we're just going to add the link towards the end. And this is uh, Cafecito con Mayas. It is basically our weekly um, study, study session event on Discord. Um, so basically what we do is all the officers come on Discord. And uh, if you want to come and get some help with your homework, uh, talk to some upperclassmen about maybe like, oh, is my resume look good? Or, hey, is this professor any good? This is the place to go and ask us about that kind of thing. Um, or just to come generally chill out and drink coffee and study. So remember, every Tuesday, 1.30 to 3 o'clock p.m. Discord. And there's the QR code for the Discord as well as I think our other socials. So like, join. So we do have leadership positions and, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> you go, so you go. The open positions we have are academic chair, mice ambassador. Um, there's an asterisk. The asterisk means that it's a shadow position. I'm director of development and the underclassman recruiter. And uh, a question we get: Do you need experience for this? No, you don't. So you could develop experience by taking up the office position and develop your soft skills. So this is a great opportunity. And like you cut this your resume. To go, do you want to add anything? Yeah, it's, if it's on your resume, it helps you with internship application or job applications as well. So not a bad deal. So we know social media is something that's addicting. So we think that you should add us. Um, we have a Twitter. You can keep up with our latest cheese or <laughs> cheese meme meeting or announcements, our opportunities. Um, we have a LinkedIn. We're professional, of course. Um, and Instagram, we do Instagram takeovers, and the um, these are to like you guys can ask questions, um, get advice from us, and like based on our experiences um, in CSUOB. Yes, Discord is like um, basically it's like a community, and like the Gafsitago Mice is in there. Yes, the all store announcements and like opportunities are also there. We have a Facebook, and if you miss a general body meeting, you can also look back to them in our YouTube. Yes, like and subscribe, comment, positive things. 
Oh, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email at info at csubmayas.org. Or um, if you got a chance to scan any of our social medias, uh, just drop a DM, you know, I don't know, what a tweet us, I don't know, whatever you got to do to talk to any of us um, officers and um, we'll get you plugged in or answer any kind of questions you have. Does anyone have any questions so far? You could say in the chat or you could um, speak into your mic, however you're comfortable. Okay, so I guess there's no question, so move on. <laughs> cool. And so our next general body meeting, which will be, I believe, is this next Wednesday? Next, next Wednesday. <laughs> next, next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be having um, an information session with ServiceNow. And if you haven't read the description already, ServiceNow is a software company. Uh, they develop a cloud computing platform to manage digital workflow. Um, so you might be asking what that is go to the general body meeting and find out. Um, but this is for all anybody interested in computer science or, you know, just want to take a look at companies that are, you know, talking to us. So without further ado, please welcome our guest speaker from North Grumman, which they will be talking about interviewing tips.
All right. So again, thank you all so much for, uh, for your patience and for joining me today. Uh, as you already know, my name is Raul Pacheco. I am a university recruiter with Northrop Grumman Aeronautics. Uh, I've been at Northrop Grumman since January of 2020. So for about a year, almost two years actually, damn, that was fast. <laughs> Before that, I was a part of Western Digital. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Western Digital, they do um, memory drives, they do uh, the acquired SanDisk. So those flash drives that you also carry, uh, that's part of that. And I was part of the university recruiting team there as well. So I've held a lot of phone interviews with students, uh, video interviews as well. I've seen a ton of resumes. And hopefully today you walk away with some interview etiquette uh, tips on what to do before, during, and after an interview. Uh, we're supposed to have Tracy Allen and Phil Diaz with me today. Unfortunately, they had some unforeseen circumstances, so they will not be able to join us. Um, of course, I will leave some space for questions towards the end. Uh, so if you have some questions, please, I will ask you to save them for the end of the presentation. With that being said, let's move on. Um, before I dive into our presentation of interview tips and tricks, I do wanna speak briefly about Northrop Grumman uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the company. So Northrop Grumman uh, solves the toughest problems in space, aeronautics, defense, and cyberspace to meet the ever evolving needs of our customers worldwide. In other words, we are in charge of designing, engineering, and manufacturing solutions that go from airplanes to satellites, to advanced sensors, to weapons, to you know, meet the needs of our customers. We were funded in 1939 and our headquarters are in Falls Church, Virginia. However, we do have presence all over 50 states and in 25 different countries. Um, we have about 97,000 employees worldwide. So you can only imagine how huge of a company Northrop Grumman is. Um, the next slide is our four operating sectors at a glance. This is the way that we make this huge entity make sense. Um, I'm not gonna dive deep into them, but just for your reference, we have aeronautics, defense, missions, and space systems. Aeronautics is the one that I'm a part of. Our headquarters are in Palmdale, California, uh, but we are in charge of, like I said, manufacturing and engineering airplanes that sometimes fly on their own. Uh, if you had the chance to watch the Super Bowl this last year, or this year, I should say, um, our, our airplanes did the flyover. So that's one of the, um, you know, the, ways that you can see our products there. Defense systems uh, do advanced weapons, uh, platform modernization, and software systems uh, to support uh, military missions or military um, yeah, um, set systems, I should say. Uh, mission systems is in charge of cyber security. It's in charge of um, advanced sensors that go into either submarines or airplanes, which is really, really cool. And space systems is very self-explanatory, anything that goes into outer space. The most significant uh, project that we are working on right now is the James Webb Space Telescope, which is actually going to launch in a couple of weeks and was manufactured in our Manhattan Beach offices really close by uh, for those of you who are in Long Beach. Very, very nice project. So I know that was really quick, but hopefully that gave you somewhat of an idea of what we do here. And let's dive into the presentation. So interview etiquette, and this is just some food for thought. Um, you know, think about your next job interview as a presentation in which the topics are your experience, skills, and achievements. So obviously whether you like it or not, you have to give a presentation at some point in school, right? And interviewing, believe it or not, is the same thing as a presentation. It's not as formal as, you know, standing up, et cetera, but it's the same thing. You're asked to talk about your experience, about your um, qualifications. For a presentation, you prepare for possible questions from the audience. And it's the same thing for an interview. You have to prepare for those possible questions. So keep this in mind as we go through the presentation and hopefully it'll make things click a little bit better. So, before you go into the interview, you have to do your homework, right? Let's go back to the presentation example. 
before you give a presentation, you have to do your research. You have to put things together. It's very rare that somebody you just stands up and starts presenting and it goes flawlessly, right? I mean, some people can do it, don't get me wrong, but it's very, very rare. It's more likely that it's gonna go well if you do your homework, if you prepare, and if you do everything necessary to excel at your presentation, hence at your interview. So before the interview, be familiar with your resume. Anything on your resume is a valid playing field for an interviewer to ask you questions about it. So even if it's not your most recent experience, you know, they can ask you questions about it. Even if it's a project that, you know, took place a couple of years ago, they can ask you about it. Or even if it's something that you listed on your resume that you forgot you were listed there, it's, you know, you could get questions about that as well. So make sure you know everything on your resume and that you have a couple of bullet points prepared just in case that you get asked on those bullet points. Uh, be familiar with the company, obviously, do your research. Great places to find information about the company is their website, social media. I think everyone is on LinkedIn right now. So if you follow them, you should have insight on their, you know, their um, news or what's going on in the company. It's always a nice touch when you're interviewing somebody and they are aware of what is going on in the company. And it's even a better or a, a bigger plus sign, a bigger green flag, if they know about the industry, right? So what are other companies doing? What are some trends that you are seeing across the industry, right? And this applies not only to North America, but whatever company that you wanna interview in. If you were interviewing with Apple, if you're interviewing with, um, I don't know, Google, DoorDash, et cetera, what other trends uh, are happening in their particular industries. That is a good way to position yourself differently or stand out amongst other candidates. And finally, you have to know about the position you're interview interviewing, right? A lot of the interviewing majors can go in a variety of different ways. For example, um, a mechanical engineer can do hands-on work as far as manufacturing, as far as testing, or it can do work that is more on the design aspect using SOLIDWORKS. So know what the internship or the role uh, is going to be about so you can know how to tailor your experience. Let's say that this particular role is a mechanical engineer, but in the design aspect. So you definitely wanna leverage your experience with SOLIDWORKS, with 3D printing and so on, versus your experience with assembly or with other um, things that are more hands-on. Um, before you want to prepare your setup, obviously, uh, you can tell that I was not prepared right now. So you can see a lot in the background. You can see that there's noises going on. Uh, so you definitely don't want to take, uh, I should lead by example, but I am not, unfortunately. Um, but you want to prepare your setup, right? You want to be in a quiet room uh, in a background that is not distracting. And these are not deal breakers, right? Obviously, managers understand that we are all trying to make things work right now uh, in a virtual environment. So let's say if your cat jumps into the, into the frame and they can see it, it's not gonna be a deal breaker. Uh, if, you know, if your neighbor starts you know, doing their garden while they're, you're interviewing, it's not gonna be a deal breaker, uh, but it's gonna help you, you know, not break focus and stay in your interviewing mindset. So keep that in mind. Um, also prepare questions. Obviously, towards the end of the interview, uh, the interviewer will ask you, do you have any questions for us? And it's really not nice when you don't have questions because it makes it seem like you don't really care about the role, right? And it's always, I don't know, it's weird when I, when I don't get asked questions. So you can always Google, you know, questions to ask after an interview and you'll get a ton. But truly ask the questions that you wanna know about. You know, is this role gonna work side by side with the engineers? What is the company culture like? Um, everything that you wanna that you truly wanna wanna know about. Um, like I said, prepare other people in your household. Uh, I know that when I was in college and I was interviewing, I lived with a lot of roommates, um, and if I had to virtually interview, it would have been a challenge. So if you live with roommates, if you live with family, just prepare them, right? I know that back then the internet got super slow when everyone was in the house. So 
if that was the case, or if that's your case and you're having a virtual interview, ask them, hey, would you mind just staying off the internet for like 30 minutes, that's all I ask. Or if, that, that, if that's not possible, go to the library. I know that luckily, uh, Kelsey Longridge's library is open again. Uh, so maybe you can rent a room there uh, or you know, even the parking lot and, and get the Wi-Fi from the library may work. So whatever will work for you, uh, just be, be mindful of preparing those little details. And finally, practice makes perfect. Um, you know, mock interviews are a good way to, to gain experience. Uh, practicing interviewing with your roommates, that's something that I also used to do when I was in college. I would tell my roommate, hey, can you ask me this interview questions or some random interview questions, just so I can have stories prepared as far as my experience and as far as my background. So practice, practice, practice. During your interview, so during your interview, you want to remember to stay calm, um, dress professionally, obviously, and dress head to toe. I've seen a lot of funny videos on the internet when people have uh, obviously a Zoom meeting and something drops or something happens and they have to stand up and they're not wearing pants. And obviously, you don't want to leave with that impression. So please dress fully, uh, dress professionally. The fact that you are in a Zoom interview doesn't mean that you have to dress like whatever, right? Still dress, you know, business casual, business professional, uh, and just to impress. Be on time. Again, <laughs> I should lead by example. So try the software uh, ahead of time, right? Try, try to join the meeting 15 minutes before the meeting time to make sure that everything is going smoothly. A lot of companies use different software. So I know that at Northrop Grumman, we use software called Yellow. A lot of companies use Zoom, Microsoft Teams, whatever the case may be. So WebEx is another very popular one. So try to make sure that you're testing the technology ahead of time so the experience goes as smoothly as possible. No distractions is, oh, ask questions. Again, already touched up on this, make sure to ask questions. And you can also ask questions during the interview. You don't have to wait until the end to ask all your questions. Obviously, if something comes up during the conversation, you can ask it, but be mindful to not lead the interview, right? The interviewer has an agenda of questions that they want to ask you. Uh, so just be mindful that obviously, <laughs> um, you know, they have to get to their questions too. Uh, now, no distractions. I know that we are very attached to our phones, um, but put them away for the time being, you know, um, if you are on your laptop, mute all the notifications. Uh, again, if you leave with other people, ask them to not interrupt you for that time being. So again, these are not deal breakers, but these will help you stay in that interviewing mindset. Um, be honest, be honest with the interviewer, right? Don't lie on your resume. Don't try to bluff or buffer your experience on the interview. That's really not a good, look on you, uh, it's really easy to tell when somebody is not being honest or when somebody is adding on to, to their story. And if they ask a, a clarifying question or if and the interviewer wants to know more about that particular thing that you could possibly be lying about, it's not gonna be a good look. So please, please, please stay honest. Uh, use of technology. This is something that uh, was not a thing and in-person interviewing, but sometimes it's nice when you had the capability of sharing your screen, maybe sharing your screen to give additional examples, or if you have, you know, a, a, an example of a project that you did on uh, on your computer that you can share, or a video of how that project went, uh, you can always share your screen for clarifying questions. Um, when I was, I was actually I'm interviewing for an internal role. And in, in my virtual interview, I had the chance to share, you know, what my tracker looked like because they asked me, oh, how do you stay organized? So I have a really good tracker that helps me stay organized and I shared my screen. It was internal, so all the information there was not being compromised. Um, and I was able to explain everything thoroughly. So again, when you can take advantage of that technology, please, please, please go ahead and do that. Again, focus on the skills that are relevant to the role. 
if you are being interviewed um, for a front or a back end developer, obviously focus on those skills that are relevant. Focus on the C, et cetera. If you're interviewing for you know, a full stack engineer, then focus on those skills, right, as well. So be mindful of the role that you are interviewing for and focus on the skills that are relevant. Um, be genuine, have fun and smile. I know that's the last uh, one, but at the same time, you know, try to show some enthusiasm, right? Try to show that you are excited about the role uh, because sometimes people tend to gravitate to, to individuals that show that excitement, that show that they care. Uh, and low energy sometimes can be misinterpreted as not being passionate about something. So I know it sounds silly, but if you can, you know, smile, be genuine, uh, and be yourself. People really want to get to know you on an interview. So just, you know, get have some room for personality there. <clears throat> All right. So moving on, the start interview method. The start interview method is the best way to answer behavioral interview questions. And these are all the questions that go, can you tell me about a time when you had to do X, Y, and Z? Or can you tell me an example of a time when you had to work with somebody that was challenging, right? So this star method, I mean, you can Google star interview method and you'll find a ton of examples. And this is the best, again, at least at Northrop Grumman and at Western Dojo, which is where my experience lays, managers were trained to ask these questions. And I know that it's very common that you would ask questions uh, in any company that you may uh, have an interview for. So I highly recommend reviewing this method. Uh, first of all, prepare, right? You wanna to listen to the question, whatever the question may be, think and organize your thoughts. It's okay if you ask for a little bit of time. It's okay to ask, oh, that's a great question. Can I have a couple of minutes to gather my thoughts? Excuse me, I much rather have somebody tell me that, that somebody just started talking and not making a point. So if you need time, ask for time. The S stands for situation. So background and context of what was happening, right? Um, I'll, I'll give an example of, of a start question in just a moment. Uh, so the task, the task is describing exactly what was a challenge. What was the roadblock or what did you have to overcome in this particular situation? Um, a stands for action and action explains exactly what you did in order to overcome the task, exactly what steps you take in order to be successful. And the results is the benefits of those actions, right? So at the end, what happened? Did that work? Did you, did you have to start from the beginning? What uh, ended up happening? So a very common star question that I personally like to ask uh, when I'm interviewing somebody is tell me about a time when you had to work with someone that was difficult to work with why was this person being difficult and how did you handle that situation? So it is, if you don't have internship experience or if you don't have uh, work experience, it's okay to draw um, stories from classes, from projects that you had worked with. Um, so a good way to answer this question using the STAR method is the following. Um, so last semester, we had to prepare a senior design project for one of my classes. And we were randomly paired up with another student. That is a perfect situation. So after a couple of meetings, I noticed that my partner was not being responsive to my texts, to my emails, and it was really hard to get in touch with them. That was a challenge, they're not being responsive. So in, in order to do that, I had to actually pick up the phone, call them, and set up a meeting with them for expectations. Uh, after the, in that meeting, I explained to them that you know, we had a tight deadline and that them not being responsive or them not being on time with their deadlines is putting the whole team behind. Uh, after that meeting, they explained to us or to me that you know, it's because they are having some issues at work, their schedules are not aligning, and we were able to finalize uh, a working schedule and divide the work so we could all take care of a portion of, of the project. And the A, you really wanna be 
thorough. Like you really want to explain everything. That's the, in the age you're going to spend the most time answering your question, because that's exactly what the managers are trying to listen, right? How did you react on that situation and what steps you took in order to overcome this? And as a result, we were able to finish the project on time, uh, delivered on time, and we got an A on the class. So again, you'll find a ton of examples and I highly recommend you Google them and practice, you know, some of the stories, you know, draw some stories from your experience. So if you encounter some of these questions as you're interviewing, you have an answer right off the bat. All righty. Finally, after your interview, you can breathe because the hardest part is finally over. Uh, before you leave, again, ask your questions. Ask the questions that you truly want to know the answer to. Um, it's, 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 it can be hard to, you know, be like, okay, what do I really want to answer? Um, but, or, or to get answers on, but make sure that it's, it, it's important, right? Uh, and an interview is not only an employer asking you questions and interview is an employer, you know, being interviewed as well. So ask questions that are important to know if, for you, if for, if you're a people person and you like to work with others, ask them. How does your team work together? Or if you are interested in development opportunities, what kind of development opportunities do you have in place? Or what kind of mentorship opportunities do you have for your interns? All these questions are great. And please, please, please don't forget to ask questions. Um, get contact information and a timeline for them to get back to you. So please don't forget to ask for the email of that person that's interviewing you. If you are on that stage, they will give it to you and ask also, what is a timeline that I can expect to hear back from? That is also a good question um, for towards the end of the interview. If you don't hear back from that timeline, it's okay to you know, send them a nice email to be like, hey, I haven't heard back, um, but I'll get to that in a minute. After you leave, you know, send a, a nice thank you email. And I, I've heard this is really controversial, right? A lot of people has told me, well, that's not gonna make it or break it, right? Um, it's probably not, but it's a nice touch, right? If they are really in between two candidates that they cannot make up their mind, that can be like a breaking point for them, right? Obviously, if you're not a fit technically, um, it's not gonna make it or break it, but it's a nice touch and it can really help you know, do those last selling points. So my recommendation is throughout the interview, obviously take notes on the questions uh, or on the things that the team needs, right? For example, if I'm a manager and I'm telling you, yeah, our team, you know, really needs somebody that is a fast learner, somebody that is not afraid to ask questions on that thank you email, you wanna highlight those questions, right? You wanna say like, oh, I believe that, you know, my ability to learn fast, my, my curiosity as a candidate will really makes me a, a, a great fit for this team. So it reminds the manager why you are such a good person for that position. And send it within you know, 12 to 24 hours of the interview. You don't wanna wait too long uh, before you send it over. And I believe, okay, the last slide before I open it up for questions, I do wanna leave a good chunk of time for questions that you may have that I can possibly address. Job interviews are very much like first dates. Good impressions counts, awkwardness can occur, and outcomes are unpredictable, right? So in a first date, obviously, like I said, it's a two-way street, right? So it's not just, you know, one person giving it their all, it's also you interviewing that company. But what I wanna, you know, the message that I'm trying to make, or the point that I'm trying to make with this uh, quote is to you know just prepare yourself the best that you can. If it's not a fit, it's not a fit and we cannot force it. And it'll be for another position, maybe in the same company, maybe in a different one, but don't get this discouraged by that. And with that, I do wanna open it up for any questions uh, from all of you. So if you do have a question, uh, you can unmute yourself. Uh, you can put it in the chat and I'll, I'll read it out loud as well, but whatever you feel more comfortable with. I have two questions. So, yeah, of course. 
what if like the interviewer is like not like you think the interviewer is like not fair like how do you change the energy i guess like do you have any tips for that can you elaborate a little bit so i'm kind of projecting a bit because like i had like this interview and uh, they were just like kind of not interested in me just because like mm, I don't know. I was like trying to like reason what tell them like why I was like the best candidate, but like I just felt like the interview wasn't fair to me in a sense. Like I want to know if you had like any tips like how to like bounce back. Does it make sense? Yeah, I think I, I I'm getting your message. So you could see like the interview was like very apathic. Like they were not giving you that same, or they were not um. Yeah, like matching the energy of, oh, yeah. like, you know, that were interested in you, etc. Well, the first thing that I would say, if the interviewing was acting like that, I think that you dodged the bullet. Because mm -hmm. like I said, uh, interviewing, it's a two-way street. And it's not only like, oh my gosh, please hire me, right? Like anybody. Uh, there are some companies that are quite toxic out there. So I think that you, that's a red flag, right? When the interviewing uh, interviewer is just like, mm-hmm. Yeah, and not really present and not really paying attention. I think that it's a red flag. But if you want to try to change that, um, you know, asking them questions in the middle of the interview, right? Like, what is it really that you are looking into, you know, into a candidate? Or you can ask them like, oh, like, what about my profile attracted you for this position? Right, and and that is going to really throw them off. Uh, like, I, like in, interviewers are not really... Um, a costume to like these kinds of questions are like being not put on the spot, but like, but, but um, to give some extra reasoning behind that. So I think that's a way that you can try to change it up. Uh, but again, if that interviewer is not really present or if they even acting, to me, this is a little bit rude. Uh, so if, if they're acting this way, it's probably a, a good thing that, you know, they passed on you. Thank you so much. I didn't think about that. The, um, what attracted you to my resume? That's good. Thank you for the advice. And yeah, my of course. second question. Um, so I know like um, one of my friends like, asked this before and I want to hear your perception. So I know that career fairs are virtually. Um, how would one like get a interview without just like being sent to the link of the internship position mm, so how can you make an like a better impression is that what, you, what i'm getting so like i know like people get like interviewed like on the spot during like virtual career fairs and but sometimes like they just get sent to the internship positions mm. So I just want to like know like, do you have like any tips for that? Just like how to get the in like an interview like on the spot? Yeah, a lot of companies do interviews on the spot. A lot of them don't. So it really mm -hmm. depends. For example, at Northrop Grumman, we used to do interviews on the spot when we were in person, but now that we are virtual, we don't do them anymore. So you, we will send you to the link regardless. Even if you um, if you we are really interested in you, we will have to send you to the link just so we can capture your information and then arrange a video interview. So it's a hit or miss as far as what companies are interviewing in person, uh, but good way to make a, a great first impression is to have an elevator pitch ready. So I know, career, I, I honestly don't like virtual career fairs because they can be very awkward. Sometimes it's only a chat and it, it feels weird. Yeah. But a good way, right? It, I cannot wait to get back <laughs> like in person. Ten minutes late. I can't type that fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, a good way to to have a good, uh, to make a great, good impression if, is that elevator pitch. You want to include, obviously, your name, your major. Be clear on what you're looking for. A lot of the times, <laughs> students are like, oh, hi. And then I'm like, hi. And then it's an awkward silence. So, you don't want that. You want to be like, hi, my name is Michael. I, um, you know, I'm this major. I go to Cal State Long Beach. I'm graduating this year. I'm looking for internships or I'm looking for entry-level roles. Uh, can you tell me a, a little bit more about your company? And always, always, always lead with an open-ended question 
because that opens up the conversation. That makes it easier for the recruiter to take it from there. Be like, oh, okay, I know exactly what he wants. Be like, yes, I do have opportunities for you or no, we, at the moment, we don't have any. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. You did. <laughs> I hope that helped. Uh, I have a question. Of course, go for it. Yeah, so um, my question is more towards like, I, I, I don't, I'm assuming you've done recruitment before or are you just? Yeah, this is my job. <laughs> okay, cool. Like and so, I, I interview students for a living, so. Yeah, okay, cool, perfect. So like, I'm very interested in getting an internship with uh, Northrop on the computer science side, right? And uh, I I sent an application this past year. What was it? Twenty twenty? Yeah, something like, in twenty twenty. Uh, I didn't get any. I didn't get any bites, right? Uh, I think I got considered, right? I got on the Northrop portal. I was like, you're being considered, and then nothing happened. No interview. Um, and so I want to ask, like, this could be specifically to computer science or generally, but like, what kind of things when you're looking over a resume stand out to you that make you want to interview? Like, are there some kind of hard skills? Maybe that's more in line with computer science question, but hard skills or, cause I think I'm personable, but right now I'm working on more of like, oh, I need to put stuff on my resume. What kind of stuff stands out to you? Right. That's a good question. So a lot of the things uh, that stand out in a resume, first of all, that has to be clean and organized. If a resume is hard to read, honestly, most likely a lot of recruiters will pass on it. I wouldn't, we have, we got so many applications that if a resume is hard to read, I am just gonna pass. So uh, make sure that your resume is clean organ and organized. Uh, right. I'm sure that it already is. Uh, some of the skills that you, maybe you wanna highlight as far as computer science is obviously all your languages. Mm, was that like a general computer science role or was that something like a full stack or? It was a you know, general internship, computer science. Okay. I think they wanted me to know C and like maybe Java. And so like, mm -hmm. and, I, and at that time I, I was a little bit more in, mm, familiar, but I couldn't really boom, blow it up. Here's my GitHub. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Well, the GitHub is it's a good thing that you have it. Sometimes when I send out candidates to computer science uh, managers, that's the first thing they ask, like, where's the GitHub? So it's it's a good thing that you already have one. Make sure that you put all your projects there because they will look at it. Um, but again, you want to highlight all those languages. If you see that in the job description, they're asking for C++ and for Java, make sure to highlight that. Make sure that you highlight um, your projects that you've done with those uh, languages. Um, Pretty much that. Honestly, that's that's as, as much as I can give you. Uh, I think that mm -hmm. for for internships, is there we don't have like such uh, like hard requirements. My second question is: Did you apply directly on the career side, or did you apply uh, through an event like this? Directly on the on the Norfolk Grenham thing, but I had a reference. I have a friend who works there, so okay, I got pushed up a little bit further because of that. So. That's good. And to give everybody a little bit of piece of advice, well, at least personally for Northrop, we do a lot of our sourcing for intern and entry level roles through events like this. So for example, I know that um, last year we were also here uh, with Mayas and a couple of, uh, of people got interviews for internships. I think Jessica actually got an internship from there, which is great. Uh, so it's, it's better if you apply through events like this. So I will go ahead and send out, um, I have it on my work computer, but I'll send it over right now. Um, it's a, a link so you can submit your application and that is a much better way to get yourself in front of a recruiter. Uh, because like I said, our career site gets flooded, flooded with applications. So it's very difficult to pay uh, special attention to all of them. But uh, if you apply through that link, I'll, I'll let me, Go ahead and send it right now to my personal so I can send it to you all right now in the chat. Um, that's That doesn't get us plotted because we don't socialize it as much. Uh, we only do it to events that we host on, on, cam on campus uh, and through a, like a smaller pool of applicants. So you will have a better chance if you apply through that link. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I, better, I gotta put more of my projects on my GitHub. It, like school ones even count. I'm assuming like to, just the ones that I get assigned my assignments because I have a ton of like lab assignments, like code this, make the simple that. Those would be cool too, I assume, right? 
yeah you can always add, uh include them like anything that that any projects that you do it, they're they're more than fine okay even if they're personal or if they're like um you know class related i know that a lot of student works also do like projects within them so oh, yeah. if you get any of them at them any any projects okay let me just see. Let me see. I see a question in the chat that says, wouldn't it be weird to ask about the company at the start if we're supposed to reach research about them getting into it? Uh, it'll be a little bit weird. Yeah, especially if you're getting into like the interview stage. By then you should know the ins and outs of the company or not the ins and outs, but you have a, a good understanding of who the company is, what they do, et cetera, right? Unless you get contacted by a recruiter directly, you know, like on LinkedIn or directly, you know, that's valid to ask about the company. But if you get to the interview stage, you definitely want to research your company ahead of time. All right, Rebecca is asking a really good question, how to answer questions about pay and how to ask about pay. That is great. A lot of companies are being more transparent about um, their salaries. So at at least Northrop Grumman is posting their salaries for all their intern roles or their entry-level roles. Uh, a good way to answer about salary, you know, what are your salary expectations? Obviously, you don't want to lowball uh, or anything. So a good way to say it is, well, I have not thought about salary just yet. Um, to me, it's a little more important to find a good fit, a good company where I can grow, especially being young in my career. Um, but what kind of budget do you have for this? Uh, for this position and they are obligated to tell you what kind of budget do you have for this role right so like turn it around right you don't want to like if you don't necessarily have to say your number um so, but but ask them what kind of budget they will know what kind of budget that they have for, for that position Can if you oh, sorry oh no go ahead i want to ask a follow-up question so like online how would you go about that they say oh what's your salary expectation that is also a, a good a good point because a lot i've seen where i've been told that a lot of um applications already you know ask you for that so do your research a lot of information is available online uh, a couple of good websites are oned.com um salary.com indeed so make your salary and what you want to take into consideration is the industry. You want to take into consideration uh, location. Obviously an offer in California is not going to be the same as an offer in Florida or an offer in Long Beach is not going to be in, the same as an offer in San Francisco. Uh, so I would do, your research, do a little bit of research before so you know uh, what you're getting yourself into. Thank you, sorry about the noise. I'm, so thank you again. No, you're totally fine. Don't worry about it. I am not prepared, as you can tell here. I'm sorry. Um, but any other questions I can answer for you all? Um, I have a question. Um, so, like, when you're asked or, like, being interviewed and you get asked a question, like, a technical question that, like, you feel you know, but, like, you're not sure, would you suggest that, like, you go for it? Or, like, you know, what if you get it wrong? Like, would, would it be worse to get it wrong or to say, like, uh, I don't know, like, what would you suggest? That's a good question. So when it comes to technical uh, questions, you do want to give it your best shot at first. Uh, try it out. Uh, a lot of the times it's going to be either problems or it's probably going to be uh, like a, a co if you're in computer science or if you're interviewing for a computer science uh, position, it's probably going to be some coding related question and algorithm. Uh, so give it your best shot. And if you still can't get it or if you feel stuck, it's more than okay to ask for help. You can always ask whoever's interviewing you, um, is this the right way to do it? Or be like, uh, I'm a little confused. You know, it, for entry level or an intern roles, it's just very flexible. So it's good to ask for some clarification, to ask for some help. Uh, but obviously after you try it out. Okay, cool. Thank you. And I am going to send Jessica. Uh, Jess, are you still on the call? <laughs> I think she might. 
she is <laughs> okay no it's fine i'll send it i'll send i'll send her the link um because like i said i had to join from my tablet um uh, but i'll send her the link uh to the application so she can distribute it to everybody thank you thank you so let me see if i can any other questions i can answer for you Hey, Ro, I actually had one more question. Yeah, of course. So this was all good for like interviews with a recruiter or something, but what about for digital interviews? What's the best way to prepare for one of those where you're not really getting feedback on your interview? I'm sorry, David. I think you cut off a little bit towards the end. I got... Um like digital interviews where you're not getting feedback yeah so because i had a digital interview last semester and it was just really weird and awkward because they ask you these questions and you just see yourself on the screen being recorded and you don't really know whether you're doing good or not you can't ask questions or anything like that yeah actually i had mm -hmm. the same thing i it's like it was so nerve-wracking and i'm gonna do one today too it's you have like 10 seconds to see the question and then you have like two minutes to answer and like you can record yourself up to two more times if you don't like it it's stuff like that so yeah what is oh, shoot. yeah exactly like that oh and best of luck with your interview <laughs> thank you well, yeah. <laughs> i know good luck with your interview well the best that i could say is like i said a lot of these questions will be um behavioral questions right because that's what they're trying to see through the video, like, you know, how well do you work with others, uh, et cetera. So I would review again, start interview questions, prepare a couple of stories. They're all the same, honestly, working well with others, um, meeting a tight deadline, working in teams, uh, being creative. So at the end of the day, even if the question is not exactly the same word for word, um, you can get an idea of what kind of questions you may get asked. Um, practice, like I said, once you have those questions, turn on your camera, look at yourself. It can be weird, uh, you know, and just talking to yourself, but practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Uh, and hopefully, you know, giving a, a couple of runs through the questions on camera will make it a little less awkward. I hope that helps. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Thank you. All right. Another good question. What is something in general that stands out for you in an interview? There's a couple of things. Uh, the first one is when candidates are prepared. Again, you can tell easily um, who is prepared and who isn't. With a presentation, is the same too, right? Haven't you seen like a presentation, whether in person or virtually, or you can tell, oh my gosh, like this person is reading word for word, or like this person's not prepared. You can tell somebody's not prepared. And it's the same with an interview. Somebody that is winging it or that is not, has not prepared like answers or that doesn't know their resume, it's really easy to tell. Um, and the other way around too. It's really easy to tell when someone's prepared, when someone has um, run through their projects. So someone prepared really stands out. Somebody that does research of the company also stands out. Um, for example, I mentioned the, J the James Webb Telescope um, earlier. Again, that's a huge project. It's been all over the news. So if somebody mentioned that on the interview, it's all another green flag that I would look for. Um, what are something else, some other things? We're just people that, you know, like I said, that prepare their answers and that have, um, that are well-spoken, that seem enthusiastic, that seem passionate about their role. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really nice. Like I said, it was, I'm glad you got to see it um, before it got to outer space. Uh, it's really, it's a gigantic, it's a super humbling experience. Uh, and I, I honestly can't wait to, to see how it goes. <laughs> um, I had like a quick, I mean, personal experience question, I guess. <laughs> um, so like, if you ask, I don't know if you asked this question during your interviews, but like when you get asked, like, tell us about yourself. There was this one time I was like, I told about like myself and my experience and like my professional experience and all that and like schooling. But then they were like, oh no, like 
what do you do on your free time kind of thing so I've always like what type of like is it I've like formulated my answer in a way or like prepared my answer so that it includes like what my experience is plus like my interests in free time but like what is there yeah. what are they trying to gauge in that question <laughs> well for the most part people are trying to gauge again not personal things so i think it's that's kind of kind of odd uh because when i ask this question i really honestly i'm sure you do great things on your free time but that's not what i'm trying to get to right uh so really what i uh want to do it's again you, where you go to school, what are your interests, etc. But I got like, um, I saw a video that it really like formulated a great answer. And I have a note right here. So the best way to, and I, this really resonates with me, the best way to answer that question to tell me about yourself, it's again, one sentence statement about something personal. For example, like, oh, my name is Raul. I am a very outgoing uh, person. I l enjoy spending time with my family and my dog. Then sentences about your professional career. So what is it that you do, right? Like, oh, I'm a, a recruitment professional, et cetera. And then the third point is, why are you so excited about that opportunity? So yeah, I, I'm thrilled about this because I've been following your company for quite a while, or because I believe that this job, um, based on the job description, I have a lot of the qualities that are required. So I believe that that's the best way to answer it. One. Um, brief one sentence about yourself then go into your um all this professional career technical experience interest and third why are you excited about the opportunity thank you of course i have a question in regards to that last one would you say that when you're asked that question of like tell me about yourself would that be a different response from a elevator speech or would you say that that response would be uh, an elevator speech i would say it's an elevator pitch definitely um so and, and as um on like an elevator pitch you want to include that personable statement just to break the ice a little bit because it's more likely to be the first question that somebody's going to ask you in an interview so i would say Add that personal statement and then the elevator pitch and then the why are you excited to be there on that time oh, okay okay thank you yeah so i know that we're a little bit over time um but i did have those technical difficulties um so again i'll send jessica the link uh, for you all to register or to like submit your information please do it asap uh, we are currently in recruiting season, so we are uh, constantly evaluating resumes for intern and entry level roles. Um, so please, please, please uh, do it before Monday uh, so we can get you in time for our interview days that are coming in early November or mid November, I should say. <laughs> um, other than that, I will stay on for a couple more minutes in case anybody else has other questions. Uh, or I'm not sure if any of the, the board members uh, wants to do any other announcements. But, but again, thank you so much for joining. I know virtual events can be very exhausting, uh, but I do appreciate your time and I hope that some of these tips were helpful. Thank you, thank you. Um, does anyone have questions for Raul or Myers? I just wait a bit. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the people that came. If you have any questions, we're just going to be here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hang out. Like you can <laughs> leave, obviously, if you want to, but yeah. just hang out for a couple minutes uh, in case anybody has questions. And if you want to add me on LinkedIn, I'm very good at posting events that are recruiting events that are coming up. Uh, so just Raul Pacheco on LinkedIn, and you'll see my smiley face. <laughs> I somewhat have a question. Um, so what if you? don't have like the experience that they require but like you did um try researching it the day before or like something days before before can you say that again <laughs> oh I'm sorry. yeah um no it's okay um so sorry i'm i need like think what i said um Okay, so let's say you're trying to go for a position and you don't have the experience required for the position, 
but that's what you really want to do. That's the type of position that and the work that you're passionate about. How would you try to sell yourself to the recruiter so that they would consider you as like a good candidate rather than just someone who doesn't have experience or does it or doesn't seem like they would be a good fit? Thank you. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> No, that, that is really good. So I would, first of all, start getting uh, somewhat of experience in that role because that's always going to overshadow, right? So if let's say you want to be a physician, I would start taking into projects that will help me leverage some of the skills that I will need um, for that role, right? If you get a phone call for a recruiter, then uh, you want to make sure that you sell yourself uh, and you emphasize those stories where you were a self-starter, when you were easy to learn, right? Maybe sometimes you had to learn a language on your own or a tool on your own. So sell those stories so they know that you are a fast learner. Um, again, a lot of the intern and entry-level roles don't have a whole lot of requirements, right? A lot of managers understand that uh, there's a learning curve for interns and for entry-level people. So again, emphasize how quickly you can learn and how um, hungry you are and, and you are for, for a role like that. Thank you so much. And thank you, Victoria, as well. <laughs> oh, this is random. This is also kind of a personal question, but um, I just got like ear piercings and I saw like that like online that like men that have ear piercings are perceived as like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like because I was worried that I look very like unprofessional like in an interview with like ear piercings and is that like still a thing or or no because like my parents are like very old-fashioned and I got attacked but like you're not gonna look professional a bunch of stuff like that so like like is that yeah a thing or <laughs> <laughs> I think it really depends on who you're talking to unfortunately mm -hmm. a lot of companies do take it very seriously or as a sign um, so I would recommend just take them off if you can for the interview. Or for example, if you're wearing something like discreet like this, it's, just, it's not a huge deal, right? It's mm -hmm. not something distracting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have a septum, um, hide it. Yeah. Um, same thing if you have like something on their eyebrows or something a little more visible. I would try to make it as small as possible if you cannot take it off uh, yeah, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, just again, because a lot of companies can be very strict on that or can be very conservative on that. Yeah. As far as Northrop, I haven't heard anything. Uh, unless you're interviewing for like a role that will require you to be like on site at the mm -hmm. production lines, mm -hmm. then that can be like, okay, that's a problem and that's going to need to go, right? Because it can get caught, etc. Yeah, for safety um, reasons or something like that. Yeah, for safety yeah. reasons. But if it's something that is not on that spectrum, I don't see a problem. Okay. However, you want to play it safe. Of course, like I said, we are in that kind of like transition period where companies are being a little more open. Mm -hmm. um so you know it's, yeah, yeah, sometimes like, it's better to play it safe yeah i just got them like a couple weeks ago and obviously like you can't get them off like until like two months or so so like i thought about that yeah. and i was like dang like maybe i didn't think this through <laughs> all the way but you know I just yeah wanted to ask yeah i would try to do like a small stone in, in that case or, like, yeah small, i mean they're, small they're as you can small, go like studs so like it's nothing too like flashy okay but yeah or I'll sometimes uh there. when i wear my my airpods like it covers them because mm -hmm. they're so small. So yeah. maybe that can work. Yeah, I think I, I'll probably do that. Yeah, that'll work for me too. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, Rebecca asked a question. She said, how do I ask if there will be training? Um, a good way, I mean, you can always ask it, like what is the, the onboarding and training process look like for interns? Or what does the onboarding and training process look like for somebody starting on this role they can be straight up about it um that's a really good question thank you so much everyone have a great rest of your night and best of luck thank you so much have a nice night everyone yeah. thank you thank you so much have a great one